People love games. They go to E3. It's like a trip to the moon for me. Wow, E3, that's pretty intense. We place to be in May. Send me to E3. <laughs> It's that time of the year again, when PlayStation Underground's most elite members, the Gamer Advisory Panel, compete head-to-head -head for a chance to go to the most intense gaming event of the year, E3. This is our biggest giveaway of the year, so competition for each of the 10 positions as E3 gap correspondence is fierce. Just wanting it real bad is not enough to get you there. You have to show us why we should choose you. Five of the positions were reserved for the winners of the national competition. How many PlayStations were sold on its first release day? Over 100,000. We received everything from artwork and PowerPoint presentations to original comic books, essays, and even homemade video games. With all this talent on our hands, narrowing it down to five winners was no easy task. But narrow it down, we did. In addition to the national competition, PlayStation Underground opened its doors to GAP members local to the LA area who also got a shot at five of the ten coveted E3 correspondent positions. The on-camera audition in Los Angeles was heated, with lots of first-time competitors going up against some seasoned veterans. Everyone had a plan for how they were going to capture the attention of our judges. Oh yeah, today I prepared a nice little routine of jokes and uh, some impressions. I boned up on my game knowledge a bit. I got a haircut. <laughs> I prepared a little uh, stand-up comedy skit kind of thing. Can I just wing it? Let's go talk to the people and let the chips fall where they may. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to rattle on, you know, like I normally do, because I can talk. I can really talk. Give me suggestions on what, what kind of things are. <laughs> what makes a good audition when you only have a few minutes to blow us away? E3 is my mecca. First off, you need to come on strong and let us know you're not just an ordinary gamer. I am the biggest gamer. They're my life. I, that's all I do. That's all I do every day. I don't even think I've eaten at all today because of this thing. If I'm not working, making a living, I'm playing games. I've been an avid gamer all my life. I just love to play games. I'm more than your average gamer. I've loved games. I've grown up with games from the very beginning. I play them constantly. I put it on hard. I don't put it on easy. I don't use cheats. I'm huge into games right now. I'm a, a lifetime gamer. I'm a rocket scientist by day. And I am a gamer by night. Secondly, you've got to tell us something unique about who you are as a person. I look good in nice clothes. I'm very informative because I'm tall. I can read, I can write, I can talk clearly. We drove over from Vegas just to do this. I have a very acerbic sense of humor. I got a unique face. I tend to be double jointed in the weirdest locations. OK, I'm not a kid. True. I got a decent look. I got a camera face. How's that for you? I'm fairly bodacious. I have 17 years of airline experience. I've always been good on the camera. You'll have to impress us with your amazing talent. After all, this is E3 we're talking about. You'll need some serious skills to get to go to the most eye-popping, brain-sizzling video game extravaganza. Freestyle action, you do some crazy dances. Oh, PSP, oh, PSP, wherever I go, there you'll be. You know, Louie, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. There are so many great actors here, like Johnny Depp. Every time I ask my father for permission to play video games, he will give me this lecture about how lucky I am to be in America. Visual aids are also a good way to sway the judges. <laughs> nice. I... I even drew a DDR pad. <laughs> all four controller ports in so you can just play all four controllers. Freaking us out the most. I'm so out that one. Of course, it helps to have a passion for games. My edge over anyone else, I believe, is just my game knowledge. Do you have any Neo Geo games? That it's a dual core 64 based system that has four SPU chips. My whole life has been surrounded by or infused by electronic entertainment. But most importantly, you need to convince us that you have the best reason for wanting to go to E3. Talk to all the booth girls. The booth babe. And the booth girls. Booth girls. Booth girls, that too. Okay, that's not enough to get you to E3, but better luck next year, guys. At the end of the day, our judges were truly blown away by how far our GAP members were willing to go to get to E3. There's going to be some awesome stuff that's coming out this next year. Then it was time to select the five they believed earned a spot on the PlayStation Underground's E3 guest list. It's game time! Here are the 10 luckiest GAP members from both the national and Los Angeles competitions who made the cut for the ultimate GAP gig, E3.
To see and hear firsthand about their amazing experiences at E3, check out our next issue. A special thanks to all our dedicated GAP and PlayStation Underground members for participating in the contest. Good luck to everyone next year. I'm looking for work. Gosh, I totally forgot. E3, it's so big, man. I mean big. They got all that high-tech gadgets. I'm there to represent Tony. First thing that came to mind when we heard that the original Mortal Kombat team was moving the series into the action genre was, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But after seeing Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, our fears quickly dissipated. We are actually very excited about this new type of Mortal Kombat game that we're creating, but we will continue to make fighting games as well. We are MK fans ourselves, and uh, all the people on the team are fans. So everything we like, we hope the fans will like. If there's something in MK2, we have it in this game, and then we've probably upgraded it to multiple levels. You know, one thing that we really try to do with all of the Mortal Kombat games is to introduce something that's new, something that hasn't been done in previous fighting games. I think one of the main reasons we decided to go to a new direction with Mortal Kombat games was because it lets us explore a lot more into the storyline of Mortal Kombat. It is another of Shang Tsung's servants. I do not serve Shang Tsung. Shaolin Monks is basically the story of what happened between the end of Mortal Kombat 1 and the beginning of MK2. Its main heroes are Liu Kang and Kung Lao and their adventures in the Outworld. Liu Kang's always been our hero through many of the Mortal Kombat's until his death in Deadly Alliance. Kung Lao is the more mysterious of the two monks. He's kind of like a Clint Eastwood kind of character. You never really see his below his hat brim kind of has a cool, quiet side to him. So there's a little bit of conflict in there between the two characters. They're both Shaolin monks. They both have, you know, the, kind of the same ancestry. But Liu Kang is really kind of like the established hero. The storyline for Shaolin monks is kind of based around the co-op mode. You can play it as either the single player as Liu Kang or Kung Lao, and you'll see the story progress. But the main storyline is the co-op mode. Liu Kang, behind you. It's actually a blast. When you're playing a Mortal Kombat game, it's always, you know, head-to-head, one-on-one. Now introducing this co-op mode is a totally fresh feel. Shaolin Monks makes use of an innovative combat system, which allows the player to deliver attacks in any direction at any time, all the while not losing focus on the primary target. Shaolin Monks introduces uh, a new fighting mechanic, which we're very excited about. Basically, either one of the characters can attack in any direction at any time during the play. So when you're surrounded by characters, you know, it's just like kind of like a kung fu movie. You, you can punch forward, back, behind you, left, right, pop characters into the air, and it's all completely open to the players. Someone who's good at, at Mortal Kombat Deception or any of the previous Mortal Kombats should pretty quickly pick up the controls from Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. We've kept a lot of the combos, a lot of the systems very similar, if not exactly the same. Like if you know a combo for Liu Kang is square triangle, it's probably gonna pull off a similar combo in Shaolin Monks. And then the juggling system is where it really opens up. You can get one guy to pop him up in the air, the other guy punches him a few times, slams him on the ground, grabs him in the air and throws him through a wall, which opens a door to the, to the next room. Shaolin Monks also goes beyond the bloodshed with a series of unique challenges that make use of brains as well as brawn. In Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, we don't have puzzles that are like turn a lever here, grab a stone and set it down over here. We wanted our fight mechanic to be our gameplay and puzzle mechanism. I really like the death traps that are interactive in the game. There's one scene in the Wuxi Academy where you have to uppercut the Tarkatans into a catapult and the catapult you know, pulls back and launches them and you see the body you know, just sailing across the trees. Still one of my favorites. Fight. 13 years ago, Mortal Kombat exploded onto the gaming scene with dynamic graphics that made its world come alive. Now, over a decade later, the game's designers are challenged with taking those original designs away from its 2D roots. 
Upgrading the moves and feel of Mortal Kombat from the original to a 3D environment, we took a lot of specific care to make sure those looked and felt right. We would actually look at the moves in other Mortal Kombats as we were motion capturing them and as we were doing things to make them look right. One of the challenges from taking a 2D MK level and turning to a 3D Shaolin Monk level was in MK2, you had one scene that's really memorable, but now you gotta take that one piece of the scene and take parts of it and make it memorable throughout a whole level. This game was like actually a lot of fun to design just because we got to bring up a lot of our old images from you know the original MK1, MK2 and actually explore them further. We were looking at old magazines and old you know, little clippings we had and dug up a lot of the old files just to see how the backgrounds are built and look at certain characters and how they were originally designed. Especially background wise, it was fun to just push it farther and farther and make it a world to explore. Previous incarnations of Mortal Kombat are notorious for their secrets, hidden codes, rumors, and cloaked characters. Mortal Kombat games have always had these secrets that we buried into there. And we just want them to be really infrequent events that somebody's going to claim they saw, but since he doesn't have any witnesses to, you know, to back up his story, everybody calls him a liar. Some of these things were true. Reptile was a hidden character in Mortal Kombat 1. A few people saw him, and so when people would see it was actually true, then they would make up their own little lie. Having finished their work on Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, designers set their sights on the future of the Pulse Pounding franchise. We're actually very excited about the next Mortal Kombat fighting game that we're doing. Like before, we are introducing, you know, two or three very huge elements to the, to the fighting game that, that haven't been done before, so we're really excited about that. I think you can expect to see the biggest roster also of Mortal Kombat characters ever in this next fighter as well. I'd love Shaolin Monks to be the first of many Mortal Kombat action games that we can do in parallel with the fighting games. This product is not yet rated. The Warrior. Valkyrie. Wizard. And Elf Return. United on a quest of revenge and redemption. Battle cooperatively with up to four players. Or for the first time ever, take the action online. The Heroic Alliance is resurrected. Gauntlet Seven Sorrows, coming winter 2005. Like you said, he's just an urban legend. That's what we thought. It's what we told the public. But I kept looking. Slowly, I uncovered his trail. Blood. And money. Across our country.
followed his trail for years. Patiently working toward today. To finally go public and tell the world where the trail has led. Present the only street racing game featuring the crew at the world famous West Coast Customs with intense speeds and killer jumps. Hold on tight for the return of Rush. All these rides are yours, fully pimped out and juiced up. LA Rush. Fall 2005. They're called the Brotherhood. They have been our sworn enemies for as long as I can remember. Led by a madman who was once my closest friend. But now, a new evil has surfaced. One with powers beyond comprehension. And those we have battled against for so long will become something we never imagined. Our allies. The apocalypse has begun.
俺には誰も助けられないと思うんだ誰も我々はセフィロスが残した影響の調査を始めたクラウドに病気なの戦う気なんかないんだ聖魂は体内に救った異物を排除するシステムの過剰な働きが原因だし母さんはどこだ兄さんが隠してるんだろ母さんの力が必要なんだリユニオンにはどうしても。みんなの邪魔をして僕たちの成長を止めてしまおうとしている家族で力を合わせて星に返しするんだ来ちゃったね自分が壊れそうなのにね子供たちを迎えに来た残念だけど裏切り者なんだその気になれば再びセフィロスを作り出すことができるじゃあそろそろ終わりにしようあんたとうなった